Now, just like with the story, the characters are great, yet simple. They're very simple to understand, and that's something, and that's just sort of something that you like about them. I mean, there's nothing really that complex about them, which makes them very easy to like. Although with other films, like, again, Labu, I, I still, I'm still saying that film, god awful, but unlike with that one, those characters in that movie were way too simple. But this one actually does give some more depth to them, thus making them more likable, and also the acting in for them is very, very good. So let's start off with the main character himself, Jack. Now. Doing a review. That's the lamest movie I've ever seen in my whole entire life, and I've been around for a really long time, like three times longer than any of you people. Actually, Dad, I really love this movie. It's the best movie I've ever seen in my whole entire no. life. It was one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. The best stop motion anime film. It's, it's a good stop motion film, but. They're kind of lame, so it was okay. Not I'm sorry for that. Um, so again, Jack Skellington is a great character. Now, there's something interesting about him. He actually has two voice actors. Now, I just really want to bring this up because one of his voice actors does his does his normal talking voice, but the other one does. But the other one is Danny Elfman, the guy who wrote all the songs who voices him while he sings. I guess his first voice actor couldn't sing well or something. So, pretty much, it's actually a great I It's very interesting to find out. But, watching this film a lot, like, I've actually seen this film three times in one day before, but having seen this film a lot, Jack actually loses some of his likability after it. Because there are so many aspects that are going on throughout the movie that he kind of gets lost in it. That's not to say that he's bad or anything. I mean, he is a great character. But once you see the movie as many times as I have, you do notice he does start to lose some of his likability. That was my dad again, as you guys didn't hear that. Um, but, yeah, he does lose some of his likability throughout multiple viewings, but he's still likable enough, and he still does keep his charm to him. And so I do love this character. He's my, he's, to me, the best character out of the whole film, but after seeing it so many times, he does start to lose, he does start to feel, well, there's nothing really other to say about it than repetitive, and of course, if you, it's just a movie. You, watching it multiple times, it's still gonna be the same film. So yeah, he is very likable. Though. And then there's Sally, who actually is not like most Disney love interests. Yeah, you know how most of the Disney love interests are just bland and generic. She's not. She'll actually give up on who she's in love with for a little bit just so that then she can get this, so then she can tell him, hey, this is a stupid idea, what the heck are you doing? Like, she will stop, she will just stop falling, she'll stop being in love with Jack and just be like, dude, this is a very stupid idea, what, what on earth do you think that you're doing? This is not gonna work. I had a vision, um... I know that doesn't really seem like it'll support my case, but I had a vision. Apparently it was true. <laughs> and really she is likable in her own way. But she's not that likable and there are better Disney care Disney and love interests, but she still does have her own charm to her and she is very likable in her own right. Then there's Zero, who I just love. And also, if you look closely at his nose, it's actually a pumpkin, which is very creative. Um, but, oh my god, I love Zero. He is great, he's a, he's a very loyal companion, and he also helps Jack 
delivered the very best song out of the whole film to me at the very end. So, Love Zero, nothing really more to say about him than he's just a likable character. Then there's Santa Claus. Oh, God. Santa Claus in this movie is a jerk. Yep, that's really all I have to say about him. He's a jerk. Nothing really that likable about him. He's cranky, which I guess I can see. I mean, he's been taken away from his world to be brought to this weird Halloween town. I guess I can see why he'd be angry. But after that, after he's been saved, he still seems to be pretty angry at him for some reason. I'm just like, dude, he just saved your life. Come on. Why are you still angry? <laughs> But, he does still have his own likability. He's actually not at all likable, sorry. He's not likable. This is just a very bad Santa. I'm sorry, Tim Burton. I don't know what you had in mind, but... He just wasn't done right. And then there's... Well, let me see here. Okie boogie. I love him. Like most people who have seen the movie, a lot of people seem to say that his song is the best out of the whole film. Well, his song is my fourth favorite. And he does have this very 60s Batman feel, Batman TV show villain feel to him. And like, he is evil. He wants to kill Santa Claus. He wants to kill Santa. But, but such a mean Santa, you kind of root for him. Because the Santa's a jerk. Again, Santa's a jerk in this. But you kind of root for the villain because Santa's such a jerk. And frankly, the villain, he's just a lot of fun. Like most people, like what most people say, I agree with them. He is a lot of fun in this. And the acting is great. His song was great. And considering that everything in his villain's lair is completely casino themed. Oh, it's so well thought out. It's so creative. Everything about his realm is completely new and it's just it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful room. I'll talk more I'll talk about more detail in the animation part. And then there's the mayor who Oh my god, this guy annoyed me. Seriously what were they thinking making this mayor so annoying? I mean, Jesus! He won't shut up! I mean, there was a moment where you think, oh hey, maybe he actually has a good idea in mind, and then... Nope! He just does something stupid. And the annoying thing is, is that near the end, he's just like, oh, I knew this Christmas thing was a bad idea. I'm just like, then so why didn't you say anything about it, you idiot? It's a bad idea to you, and yet you said nothing? What? Who was... What? Why'd you do that? Why'd you say nothing? God, what? But yeah, I really just do not like the mayor. As you can tell, I do not like this mayor. Um, and this movie is probably gonna be a two-parter now that I'm saying this character for it's getting lengthy, probably because my dad keeps on interrupting me. But, um... And then, there's the mad scientist guy, or Dr. Frank Fackelstein, I guess that's his name, who I didn't really get that into. I mean, he doesn't really show up that much, and, and you could argue that there is a related scene where he was actually Oogie Boogie in disguise, but... Where would that come from? <sighs> Seriously, where would that come from? Which is a funny delete scene, though. But, um... Yeah, he just didn't really offer anything for me. Not that he's a bad character or anything, he just didn't really offer anything. And then there's the town people who... Eh, they're okay. Although I do like two little kids in the town. They are awesome. There are two little kids. One of them gets the evil duck thing that the vampires made, and one of them gets the weird bat vampire thing that... You know, the corpse, dad, the werewolf, and something else made. 
with the chain, how they were hanging the thing with the chain. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, well, those, the two kids that received those two gifts are awesome. They don't have a line, they don't say anything, but they are just awesome. To me, at least. You want to know why? Because they are resourceful. And also, when they first get these gifts, they don't care how they look. They are just like, oh my god, these are the coolest Christmas gifts we have ever been given. They they are just like, oh my god, these are awesome Christmas gifts. I love these two kids. I don't know why, I just think that they are awesome. They got these two gifts, and they're just like, wow, this is one of the coolest Christmas gifts we've ever received. And they're right. It is. And then, and also, for the Christmas gifts start to attack them, what do they do? They don't go running off into some window or dead end or anything. What they do is actually, they run into their into their parents' room, which is a very smart idea, and then block the door. It's like they were it's like they were about ready to say hey dad, go get the shotgun, we need the shotgun go get it now. And it's like they were about ready to say that. I seriously just love those kids. I don't know why I just love those kids. They were awesome. Then there's the people in Halloween Town who are okay. I mean, there are some of them that are really annoying, and there are some of them that I don't even care why they were supposed to be scary. Like, the guy who made the hat thing out of a rat and a, or a bat, yeah, I, I didn't find that scary. I, I don't know, what was he? What was that guy? But, um, yeah, the, the people in Halloween Town are, like, born to have their own charm. So, in all, how are the characters? They're very simple. But, like the story, that's just one of the things in the film that work. They are simple, and they are generic, and they are like all sorts of other main characters that we've had before. But, they keep their likability around, and they do not fail to deliver entertainment. So, for them, I give them, again, an 8 out of 10. Now, on to the animation, which I'm probably going to be doing at different parts. Okay, so, the animation. Now, much like with Coraline, it is just beautiful. And that mainly plays a part because of the colors. Like, the colors in this movie all have their own different... They all have their own different kind of colors for this movie. Like, while we're in the Halloween world, it's mainly dark and gray and blacks and dark red and purples, and sometimes some blues, but that's pretty much it, and everything's sort of foggy, it's like every, like they have this weird light coming off of them, which actually does add on to the atmosphere of how Halloween Town looks, it has a certain sort of color, colorful, yet you know something's really weird about this town feel to it, that you kind of admire, it really does look great. And there is also the world with Christmas Town, which is way more bright, like all the colors are more bright, there's much more color to it, which is actually what I think the movie intended to do. The colors in the Christmas world are way more colorful and bright. Although I still wonder what the heck was behind that that leprechaun, that St. Patrick's Day door. I mean, seriously, what was that? Was it like everything is green? Was it the Matrix? Because everything in the Matrix is green? Was it that? Because it feels like it was that. Um, but yeah, every and also in the human world, it's a little bit more bland colors. Like their world is really boring compared to the worlds that we just saw. Which, again, works. So the color aspect of this film, and also the way that it's stylized, with being Tim Burton's usual weird yet fun style, it really does work for the feel of the film. Oh yeah, and also I forgot to bring up in my characters parts about Lock, Shock, and Barrel. These kids are insane. I'm sorry, I forgot to bring them up in the characters part. I'm going to bring them up now. They are insane. Although, growing up in a world filled up with Halloween, I, I kind of understand why. But seriously, these kids are insane. But, 
yeah, I really do love how the, how the animation works, and it does look beautiful. So, for the animation, I am going to give that a 9 out of 10. And now I'm going to be having a part 3 of this review. Yeah, this is my first review to get onto a part 3. That's mainly because my dad arrested me. So, yeah. See me in part 3. You want?